Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow 3 bringing you the 20. Well, sorry, the June 2 EU tournament for Zero K. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be alone today. Flores has a meeting to go to, so he's not able to cast with me, and thus I am alone. Anyway, we're gonna be starting out pretty quickly, but before I get started, let's go over the brackets pretty quickly. Oh, First round, we do have one person behind the rest of everyone. Sandy Kane's and Killer versus Ralhop. They will be. They might be playing first. They're trying to, from the looks of it, but Kane is not here right now, so that is infeasible at the moment. After whoever wins that, fight Skazzy and Black Duchy. Or Skazzy, should say, and Black Duchy. And then. Uh, outside of that, we have Spireman and Hauer. Q Wood versus Cubane, Eternal Rookie. Anarchy the Sponge versus Countertop and Chucky. Google Frog versus Aqu and Aquanim versus Norm616 and Kmar. So out of these guys, I'm not really familiar with Countertop or Aquanim. I'll double check their IDs, but I'm fairly certain I don't know who they are. I have not casted a game with Aquanim. Actually, I have check checked Aquanim. He's relatively new. I've not casted a game with him. He'll be interesting to watch. Same with Countertop. Never seen him either. Uh, we have some new players here. That's great to see. I enjoy seeing new players in tournaments. Absolutely wonderful. So we're just waiting for the first game to get started. Not sure when that's going to happen, but when it does, then we'll immediately get into there, and that will be it. Well, that'll begin this 2v2 tournament. It's going to take a little while to get started, like I said. So right now it looks like Sanic is just... W we're just waiting on Kayan, although Kayan is not apparently here right now. I don't think he had any particular delays, though he might be just in North America. And right now it's 2 in the morning Pacific Standard Time, or, well, Pacific Daylight Time. I don't seem to where Kayan is right now. I apologize, I just wanted to start on time, because I did say it's going to start at 2. But players are being a bit delayed. And I lack any co-commentator. Yeah, Sactos isn't here, and Flores is a meeting. It looks like we are going to be starting with someone other than Sane Seneca Kane. <sighs> Not sure who. Probably going to be Spider-Man as Failman versus Cuba and Eternal Rookie, because they are all here. That seems like it will be likely the match we'll be playing first. And then once that's done, of course, then the game starts, but that's, you know, first... First out of the gate will be likely that match, which... I believe we saw Spider-Man and Spellman in the last one. And they didn't do especially well. Not sure if QB and Eternal Rookie are going to pan out, though. I really don't know. Because... Oh, also Eternal Rookie, alias for Magman. Oh, you don't know who Eternal Rookie is, but you know who Magman is. That's who Eternal Rookie is. Always good to keep mindful of that 0k players, they change their names all the time. See, we... Well, uh, I'll see if I can suggest the tournament going up that I mentioned. Because Kan is not here. When he arrives, we shall play that game, but for now, no. That's still waiting for players to get in. Anyway, the first map that's going to be played is Conquest of Paradise, which I can't really go over too much at the moment because the game hasn't started at all. But it is probably going to be interesting. I don't. I have not casted Conquest of Paradise ever. 
I will be going over it once the game starts. Get everyone familiar with it. Looks like a fairly large west versus east map. Yeah, that is the first map that is going to be played. Okay, well, it looks like Cubay and Eternal Rookie are ready. Starman and Spaleman are just getting in as well, or at least getting ringed. Because they are apparently not here, oddly enough. Alright, well, we're just waiting on Starman and Spaleman to unspec in the game. Then once that happens, we will have our very first game of the June 2v2 0k tournament. Eventually. Okay, well, at any rate, we're... I don't really know what to talk about, honestly. I mean, the map is not really much to show until the game starts. And... I guess I could do that. I Sorry, I'm just trying to think about what to do, because I do have... some options. I guess I will just get a... See here. Conquest of Paradise. So yeah, realize this is a little bit weird to look at, but anyway. Is that Okay, sorry about the delay. Like I said, it's just waiting on the players to actually get in the game. Once that happens, we will have the game start. And for now, I'll go over the map. So this is the map. It has... Well, it's, it's a map. Like, not much really to say about it, other than it has... Especially, you can see metal along the west side and along the east side. Why is my cursor not coming through? Hmm. Whatever, anyway. Metal along the east and west sides of the map. So that's where the players are likely starting. And actually, that is the start boxes. There, This is a 4v4 map, by the way. This is not meant for 2v2 necessarily. It is designed for up to 4v4. It'll be interesting to see how the players decide to spread out which, which trio of mechs each one goes for. The center of the map is considerably higher ground, and given the way it's arranged, I doubt we'll be seeing vehicles, even though this is a 16x16 16 16 map. Very likely we'll see bots instead, possibly spiders given some of the higher sections of the map. Probably just cloaks and shields primarily. This map is going to be played a lot, by the way. Get, get used to it, because it is going to be the map for round one of every single round one match. So, the first ten matches, like I said, I mean, round one includes the Santa Kane match that is currently on hold pending Kane, and it looks like we are just waiting for a Spider-Man to get active again. And Scott Z pointing out that there are geothermal spots in the western and eastern bases, or presumably in the centers, because the map page doesn't actually show where that is. And that, yeah, the map page doesn't actually show where that is, so it's a little bit hard to see. Apologies, oh, I do not know why it's not showing me the map. I was going to be a little bit finicky when it comes to capturing web browser. There we go. All right. So anyway, once that... Once this fireman starts paying attention and actually gets back in here, we will have... The game starting. Yeah, this is the map. Study it well. Learn it, because you're 
if you're, if you're watching this, you're not playing right now. But you might actually be playing later. You might just not be playing in this particular game. It looks like we're just... Might as well just update everything. Still waiting on a Spider-Man to get back into the game. We'll figure out where he is, and then from there... I don't know. Work it out. It looks like we're actually going to have probably replacements coming in. So if you are watching it, you aren't signed up, and you want to play, there's possibly room. It looks like there are people who are not showing up, and with no-shows, we tend to replace them. like no we're still waiting for a spider-man he has apparently been idle for 20 for nearly half an hour really <sighs> ridiculous so not sure what to really say here. I honestly don't. Never takes this long for this stuff to start. Like, really, it just doesn't. This doesn't happen. Players usually more on the ball. Okay, never mind. We might be switching over to Anakin and, and the SpongeBob's countertub and Kucky. Yeah, that that is exactly what's happening. All right, never mind. Spider-Man not showing up, so we're changing the matchup. Kid and the Sponge. So, like I said, I don't really know who Countertub or Pukaki are. I do know very well who Anarchid and the Sponge are. They have been in these tournaments a lot. They have been playing a lot, but Countertub and Pukaki are fairly new, I think. I mean, it's possible that Pukaki is actually... Double check. I don't think he is a known player. Let's see. Let's get the AFKs off their user page or off the little preview box in the forums, but I need to actually find him. And I can. Not easily, anyway. He has. Do you have any AFKs? I mean, not AFKs, AKAs. To apologize, it is 2.30 in the morning. No, he's... No one I really know. So yeah, two new players! Hooray! New players! Awesome! Like I said before, we don't get enough new players playing tournaments, and I am glad we have some new players playing in this tournament. Because that is interesting. This should be interesting. I mean, I guess Anarchid and the Sponge, that is going to be a tough matchup. And it looks like we are getting started! Hooray! Finally! We are getting started and... Okay, actually, just a small update. The Santa Kane game is going to be on Adamantine Mountain, not on Conquest of Paradise. Just as a bit of a, a side note. Once, of course, that all gets started up. We'll wait for that to happen, but eventually it will. Some point in the... First, okay, there we go. Sorry, I don't know why I'm commenting on the loading of the game. Oops. Audio up for now. So we have, like I said, Anakin the Sponge versus Count Up and Kucky. Oh, in this map, oh, that's just an island too. I didn't know that. Pretty. So anyway, Anakin and the Sponge are going to be probably starting on the west side of the map, while Count the Top and Kucky are on the east side. There are geothermal plants along the center entirely, not just the west-east center, but the center center as well. 
and a lot of metal spots, all of which are value 2. Looks of it. Yep. Uniform value 2 metal spots, so nothing particularly valuable. It's all a matter of getting map control. Becky going for, looks like the southeast center. And Sponge and Anarchy just talking strategy. Not particularly specific anything, no factory choices or anything like that. Just vague discussions. And it looks like Countertop is actually disconnected. This is annoying. I think Countertop might be restarting. Okay, he's back. Rejoin, and then... Looks like Sponge planning on going for Cookie Butt Factory, and I was actually slightly wrong about that, the height map. As you can see, the start locations are high, while the rest of the map is fairly low. A few small hills here and there, and given the height of the hills, Cookie Butt Factories will work fine. Cookie and Shieldbot Factory works fine. Vehicles would be tricky, but I think they would be working fine. I don't think there'd be any problems. Looks like from the height, they would drive through it no problem. So I wouldn't worry about those too much. And then... The Sponge, yeah, Sponge is going for Cookie Butt Factory because he's got that planned out, along with just taking his trio of mexes. Kucky not actually planning out his build yet. Not sure why. Countertub... Is he still not connecting? Countertub seriously not connecting? I'm... rather surprised. Oh, there he is. Okay, Countertub has connected. Wonderful. So we'll not have 2v1. Anarchid going for Cloakie as well. So double Cloakie from Anarchid and the Sponge. While Kucky and Countertub have not planned out anything. Countertub actually only has about 20 seconds... Oh, 10 seconds nearly to set up his starting location. Or... Nope, never mind. Oh, there it goes. He has set it up, but just barely. So Countertub and the Sponge will be... Uh, sorry, Countertub and Kucky a little behind. Kucky is going for Cloakies. And Countertub also going for Cloakies. A bit proxy here. Get the audio in the actual game now. Count the tub going, like I said, a bit forward while the Sponge and Anarchid already getting the Cloakie Butt Factory out. Both of them going for, well, actually, Anarchid going for a bit more of an economic focus at the start. The Sponge going much more aggressive. Anarchid only has one Glaive while the Sponge has, f well, getting three off the bat. No, five off the bat, sorry. He is going very aggressive. So outside of the map, we are going to have a very early battle going in. Count the tub with a couple Glaives and the Sp and Gucky with another two, but... Sponge out micros that first one. Actually, he's surrounded the first one. Local advantage wins every time. Or very nearly every time. Gucky not even going for workers yet, just going straight for glaives. While Kalidub makes a couple sides. This is really early for getting sides. There aren't really any there aren't any choice targets I can think of. Maybe the mexes, but the commander's right in the way. This early in the game, Scythe is a tip it's a very difficult strategy. It's not typical. Not at all typical. Glaive into conjure, that's usually what you see. But size like this, not so much. The Sponge holding the south side between Countertop and Kucky while Anarchy goes over to the north, harassing from the north side. And it looks like there is... There is going to be a pretty heavy raid here. Anarchy just getting into Kucky's base with no real resistance either. This is... Oh boy, I do not anticipate this match lasting particularly long. We do have a center map set up, but... Oh, nice! Flank by the Sponge, going in from the south side against a line that stretches north to south. Getting rid of all of Bukaki's glaze, or almost all of them, with no losses of his own. Very nicely done, Sponge. Very clever there. I mean, Sponge has radar. He could, he could totally see that that was there. There was no surprises there. He just took advantage of the knowledge that he had. Full advantage of the knowledge that he had. Very well done there. And Anarchid going in for further raiding. Bucky setting up a laser tower. Just gets it set up, but not quite in time. Unfortunately, the Cloakie Butt Factory for Bucky is, well, getting damaged a bit. But Anarchid actually losing a glaive in the process. And Bucky's commander coming in to defend. So Anarchid's raid is cut short. Got the Cloakie Butt Factory down to 60% health, though. So not bad, but Count the Tub and Bucky are starting to stabilize a bit. Oh, and a tick for Cow in the Tub. Getting rid of Anarchid's Glaze, finishing those off. Does stop the Metal Extractor and Solar Collector, but that is a small price to pay to actually keep them alive. However, Anarchid the Sponge taking the center of the map pretty strongly. Cow in the Tub trying to take the south lane, the low ground at the south with a Lotus. 
But honestly, this there's eight glaives coming in. That'll tear up the Lotus. That'll tear up the Metal Extractor. That might even kill the Commander with another... Some, yeah, reinforcements coming in. These glaives are about to kill that Commander. And Kalanatub loses his Commander. First Commander out. Three minutes into the game. Wow, this is fast. Countertop loses his first commander, and I just realized this map, despite its size, is actually pretty close quarters. Kind of hard to tell, maybe it's just because we are still in the raiding phase. But it does not feel as big as 16 by 16 would imply. I suppose because there's just direct paths everywhere, and it's flat, pretty much. And this, units can go anywhere, or at least bots can walk anywhere, so there isn't this... Not like, say, Bandit Plains, there's also 16 by 16, but it feels a lot larger due to the fact that you can't run everywhere, which I prefer, personally, but this map is still kind of interesting, despite the fact that the only effect of hills is speed and sight. Still a good effect, though. Anyway, and also, it's pretty. It's really nice to look at. But, aesthetics aside, the sponge getting pushed back by a countertop, but doesn't matter. I mean, counter countertop and Bukaki are just they're on the back foot. The Bukaki starting to take more and more in the north. Actually pushing back against Anarchid along the north low ground. Likely just to be able to take the center. But he will get rid of one of Anarchid's conjurers for free. That was a nice kill. The Sponge. He's moving with a few more Glaives. What does he have constructing so far? Sponge has Glaives constructing along with some conjurers. Oh! Anarchid switched over to Warrior Tick from here on top of Glaives. Countertub going for more Glaives, as is Pukaki. Both Pukaki and Countertub still going for Glaive Conjurer mix. And they are still way on the back foot. I mean, Anarchy and the Sponge, 20 metal each. Pukaki has tw nearly 20, but nowhere near as much energy. Countertub only has 8 metal. He is really falling behind. And the Sponge reclaiming everything here that Countertub had in his territory. Has his commander in the territory, so Sponge just being cruel at this point. Anarchid. Going on the north side, going to be flanking from the looks of it. No, not quite. He happens to get a nice position for flanking, but not going to take advantage of it. Instead, going to go for harass, taking on the metal extractor. And Kaki's forces will be coming in, but the metal extractor goes down, and Kaki's forces are coming up the high ground. While Anarchy just goes along the other side of the hill, completely avoids Kaki's forces, and goes continues to the north. Gets rid of Kaki's radar pretty soon, while the sponge goes along to the south to get rid of... Well, not do anything, really. He's not going to actually do any damage, but... Anarchid gets rid of radar and a metal extractor. Not getting rid of the other metal extractor. I don't think... No, right now, Anarchid is not aware of that. He just sees it again. I'm curious. What does Bukaki... Okay, Bukaki does see a bit of Sponge and Anarchid's forces, but... They only have some historical knowledge of Anarchid and the Sponge's bases. They know where they are, but they don't know exactly what's in them right now. However, they are... What they think they know is what they know. It's actually perfectly accurate. Their information is not that out of date. No facts which is so far from either player. Both the Sponge and Anarchid... No, just the Sponge as a caretaker. Anarchid does not. Anarchid... Looks like he is just spending most of his metal building up... Yeah, he's building up defenses and radar all along the map. Well, Anarchid about to get rid of... Oh, just gets rid of Kaki's commander. Anarchid and the Sponge pretty much have this game. Six minutes into the game, and both of Kalantub and Bucky... Both Team Red's commanders have died. Pretty gruesomely. So that is going to be That's gonna be a bit of an issue for Kalantub and Kucky. I mean it's possible to win without your commanders. It's not easy, but it is possible. However, on a map like this with a 2v2, the tough part is reclaiming. The sponge, he has his commander up front here, just reclaiming with impunity. If he gets attacked, he needs a fairly large force to actually kill the commander. Having a bunch of conjurers going up front to reclaim. That's much harder to do. Actually, Anarchy's in a much better position because he's playing a battle comm with a riot cannon. But even the recon comm, he can just jump away if he needs to. That is a big deal. The fact that you just can't reclaim the center of the map as easily as you can if you have a commander. Especially a decently battle-equipped commander. Given that, Countdown and Gucky just have only the map to work with for economy. And if they get attacked and defend, they have that metal to reclaim. I mean, Bukaki along the north side of the map is moving out. He looks like he wants to counter raid. He's got a lot of glaives too. Wow, that's 18 glaives. Not bad. However, a warrior getting overwhelmed by glaives. Too many glaives that warrior, which does happen, of course. Very important thing to keep in mind when you're using warriors is that warriors do not last forever. However, Anakin's commander coming under attack. The riot cannon looks like it will be. It'll be doing the trick. That's all he needs. Battle to come with Ride Cannon. Now, if that said Glaze had attacked the south, that attacked here with... Where is it? The Sponge's Commander, yeah. 
Attacking the Sponge's commander, only Beam Laser. Other than the fact that the Sponge has 27 Glaives available for support, right there. Counter Tub actually, sorry, Bukkaki would have actually been able to probably kill the commander. I mean, he got Anarchist's commander to half health. He got 2, 000, nearly 2,000 health off the commander. That would have been enough to kill the Recon Com here. That much firepower would have killed the Sponge's commander, although neither Bukkaki or Counter Tub are apparently aware of this. And the game has been paused. And anyway, while it's paused, I'll point out that Bukkaki and Count the Tub are voting to resign. Yeah, Count the Tub figures he can't win this game, which is probably right. They don't even have any vision of what's going on. Yeah, they are out. So that is game one. Nicely done for Anarchid and the Sponge. So another game between them. Game two will be starting in just a moment. And we will have that probably pretty soon. Usually it doesn't take too long to start up. That was definitely interesting. I suppose I shouldn't have been too surprised. I mean, like I said, Kucky and Countertop are kind of new. I haven't really seen them play much before. And Anarchid and the Sponge, I mean, Anarchid is top, he's number seven player right now, and the Sponge has been top 10, is right now somewhere in the top 20. Just wait until we get the next map going. And I think probably, Well, I've already started talking during the intermission music, so I might as well continue. Interesting map. I'm glad it's actually the map that we're using. Con Conquest of Paradise is definitely neat. I've never really seen it before. I know it's used a lot in the large team games, but given that I don't cast large team games, and it's never used in 1v1s or the, TV the few 2v2s that I've cast as exhibition matches, I haven't actually seen it much. And Scuzzy pointing out that Cloakies are OP. They won! Yeah, but Scuzzy... Cloakies also lost. Really important to point out, Cloakies did lose that game. Just saying, that is a really important thing to bear in mind. However, when are we starting? We should be starting the next map. Ah, Counter Tub looking for the map, because Pekaki and Counter Tub are choosing the map. Loser does choose the map, and I'm guessing... Hmm, not sure what Counter Tub wants to choose. I mean, they were going for a bit more of an aggressive style, but honestly... So was Anarchid and the Sponge. I mean, Anarchid and the Sponge out aggroed. Bandit Planes wouldn't be a bad idea, given how it is a bit more defensible. But no, I... Wait, what the... I, Icy Run? Are you kidding me? Are you... you I, someone, please explain to me why people insist on using Icy Run for team battles. It barely works for 1v1. Okay, no, apparently we're playing Icy Run. And apparent, okay. Apparently, this whole thing's turned into a joke because the team's assignments have completely screwed up. I don't even know. Okay, we'll just get back to this. I figured I'd talk during the intermission to reduce editing time, but not sure that's gonna be successful because Anarchid and the Sponge, yeah, everything screwed up. The Sponge Counter Tub. Show you guys. Sponge Counter Tubbers, Anakin, and Kucky. That's not the team set up. That's not how it's going. It's the other way around. According to the brackets. Not the way it was set up. <sighs> Alright, whatever. We'll have to get back to the game once the game actually gets going. Uh, yeah. I'm... Yeah, I guess it got auto-balanced accidentally. Oceans accidentally. And that was... That is the correct balance we were doing, just a standard pickup match. But we aren't doing a standard pickup match. Yeah, they actually hit start instead of four start. It's a slight issue with the lobby. Well, not only an issue with the lobby, it's it's working as intended. They just forgot how to make it work the way they wanted to do. Okay, now we're starting, which is good. Starting the proper way. Alright, there we go. And we have the game going. So, like I said, why, 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 why this map? There's a dozen metal spots. Total. Maybe a one per player safe metal spot with a geo in between. Overdrive Ho, I suppose. But even then, I guess this game will at least be mercifully short, if nothing else. Though I can't say that Count and Tub and Kucky have a chance, honestly. They did not do well with the aggro last game, and admittedly, 
They didn't do well with being harassed either, so at least in this case they don't have much... There's not much in the way of harassment windows. But there's still this North Hill, there's still the South Hill, there, there are ways... There are ways of dealing with this. There are ways of messing with the opponent. Oh, actually, Anarchist on this side. Anarchist and the Sponger on that side. Never mind. Count the Tumpet Cut Gear on this side. So there's this hill and this hill. There's ways of getting in that aren't direct. Counter Tumpet going for light vehicles. Cucky going for shields. Anarchid and the Sponge have not chosen... Actually, the Sponge not even chosen a start point yet. Looks like Anarchid wants to go for Kalukabad Factory up on the hill. What the heck? Seriously? That, that can't be right. Anarchid's probably misclicked. And Anarchid going for... Bit of a troll strategy. Scythe Glaive, according to the chat. What? Okay, I mean, you can get away with it. Go for it. Sponge going for Cloakie, by the way. So Anarchid looks like he's going to go for Proxy Cloakie around here. And yes, there we go. Anarchid jumping forward. And we'll be going Proxy Cloakie. As I switch the audio up. Proxy Cloakie into Scythe Glaive, apparently. We have Glaive coming up. We have, for the Sponge... I Sponge has three, oh, four glaives coming in from the start. Five glaives actually coming in from the start. Hyper aggressive strategy. Bucky going for dirtbag with a couple shield. Sorry, a couple bandits. Shield blood factory. Count up light vehicles going for slashers. Actually, scorchers. Seriously, change the name, please. Anyway, scorchers are going forward with the bandits. They will, like I said, have a problem with these hills. The hills get in the way. As predicted, and the dirtbag also dies predictably, but that's what it's supposed to do. Scout out and die. Well, the bandit's moving forward, but the sponge has enough glaives to beat the bandits. While Anarchid, no sides yet, apparently. He had some glaives, but they didn't do too well against the Scorchers. And the sponge moving in, he will be countering... Oh, getting rid of both bandits. There's still one or two bandits behind... No, three bandits behind... So, Kucky and Kalidab not getting attacked completely yet, and I think I can see exactly why they did go for Icy Run. Despite the fact that there is raiding potential along this north hill, it is easier to defend from raids coming along the north or south sides, or just raids coming along basically the flanks. You know, if you were to draw a line between the two teams, the raids would be coming along a line perpendicular to that. That can't happen on this map due to the size of the map, the shape of the map. There's just no way to attack from the north or the south. There's no way to attack against that line. Given that, Anarchid and Sponge can still pretty much go straight forward and attack, and of course, Scythe if there were to come in, but Anarchid, no, he's going for Warriors and Rock... He's going for Warriors Glaives instead, not Rockos, just Warrior Glaive. Not bothering with the Scythe, at least not at this point. He does have Raider at the center of the map. So Anarchid and the Sponge are going to have a massive information advantage right now. Kalatov and Gucky, they only have Line of Sight. They don't even have radar at this stage. While Anarchy and the Sponge do have radar, and... Ooh, Anarchy gave me more radar. Pretty much full coverage. Doesn't have the main base covered, but everything else, yeah. He knows exactly what's going on. Doesn't actually have any knowledge of what the players built other than... Well, no, it, they, they know what the players' factories are, but they don't know what the bases are. And Countertop and Kucky have no clue. Though they'll probably assume that it's both Cloakies, but other than that, they really don't know. Absolutely no idea at this point. And Sponge... He's got this south side. Anarchid's got the center. Actually, Anarchid... Ooh. Defender for Countertop. And Countertop's commander coming in to destroy Anarchid's defense as well. Gucky goes along the south side to do not much at all. Countertop, his recon com has to retreat against these Lotuses. The will be able, Ooh, not quite killing one. 20 health left. Could have killed that. Jumping a bit later. Gucky, however... He's... Basically a Ravager. Walking Ravager, got the Assault Cannon. A little surprising. Not sure why he went for that. Not bad anti-heavy, but at the same time... Usually the commander's big threat is going to be... At least in team games, a lot of raiders. Admittedly, a couple warriors would be a big threat too, so... In that case, Assault Cannon kind of makes sense. Though, Rocket Launcher would make more sense and also work well against raiders. Ribkucky is apparently just going for harassment with his commander. But his commander about to... Ooh, nice support. I was supposed to say, about to get attacked, but of course, there is support. What am I saying? There's tons of support. And Gucky and Kalidab have actually taken that as a counter deck opportunity. Going decently far into this base. A Wolverine up for Countertub. Just to try to push a bit more ground. But Anarchid coming along the center of the map. Actually, oh, not... Is he going to get rid of the Mason? No, he doesn't. He does not get rid of the Mason. And at the same time, Countertub and Gucky 
I have to contend with this hill, which the sponge makes really good use of. Scorcher is down here, but it can't go up the hill, so these glaives quite safe, but Bandit's still in place. And the Bandit's in place are going to be a problem. However, Anakid does have the center of the map. This, The importance of this cannot be overstated. Anarchid has the map center. Okay. He's got the center of the map. And he's now taken the north side of the map as well. And he's pretty good units too, with the warrior here in the north side, just holding that well. Kucky, however, coming in with... Well, the attack on the south side, a bit hampered by this hill. Kucky is coming in with his commander and bans to take the hill as best he can, but he can't easily micro on that hill. I mean, micro is this game kind of tricky to begin with because of the fact that you do have to, it's just really quick. Units do die very quickly in the raiding stages, or raiders die quickly to each other. On hills, it's even harder, just due to the fact that they have to deal with the speed changes on terrain. Units take longer to climb up hills, as you'd expect. Or at least, as they would in real life. Shouldn't say as you'd expect, because a lot of games don't actually take... Well, I don't know how many games even take hills into account to begin with. Not a lot of RTS games I can think of use hills, except as minor cosmetic features. Outside of the TA line of games. Anyway, Anarchy coming in to basically get rid of the slight entrenchment, but unable to do so. Warrior goes down to Defender, takes out a few units in the process, though, gets rid of the Mason, which is rather important, but a Convict up for Kucky, so... Kind of the time of Kaki. Team Red still has the south side decently held. Though, there's an opening here, which Anakid appears to be taking advantage of. He is going for that opening. I, what the heck? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, I... There we go. Anarchid is... He is gonna get this pretty well. Kaki, moving back a few units, I think that they do have... Do they have knowledge? Yeah, they have radar. Okay, Kucky and Countertop do have radar of parts of the center. They have some knowledge of what's going on, and... They... Oh, whoa, what? Oh, there's radar inside, pretty much behind enemy lines, or very nearly so. So they've actually got radar coverage of the majority of the map. They have less radar coverage of their own base than they do of Anakin the Sponges. You know what? They actually might have a chance. My earlier comments were probably wrong. Looks like Countertop and Kucky are going to be at least... Putting up a decent fight. The radar has gone down. Sponge is pushing back against Pukaki's commander. A little bit tricky due to the hills, but still the Roccos. Those Roccos are coming in, and bandits to counter those Roccos. While Sponge and Anarchid are taking the north, and it looks like they're gonna be attacking along the north side. There is a Wolverine setting up some mines over to the hill just in case. But that's not gonna last too long. That Wolverine is in range of the defenders, and a glaive gonna come in to finish it off. Ooh, Defender is actually what kills it, not the Glaive. But Kucky going in for a nice attack with the Bandits, cornering the Roccos, forcing them to just hit the side of the map and stop. Unfortunately, the Bandits also in the side of the map. They need to get a little bit away from there to get a good position. And the Roccos able to move back, and with the Warrior, the Bandits go down. Kucky has to move back his commander as well. These Roccos are doing an okay job. I mean, they're, they're defending. But that was kind of... Part of that was Kucky just got his bandits stuck in the south side of the map. And actually, can, what the? Your, your commander is going to die. Or maybe not. No, it looks like he's going to get away. It's going to be a close run thing, though. In fact, I'm not entirely sure. A lot of it has to do with the hills. Just Kucky's commander outside of line of sight. But no, even with that, the commander goes down. Taking a decent chunk out of that hill and a decent chunk out of Kucky's economy. Oh, well, that goes, there goes that, and Anarchid taking the advantage, or pressing the advantage at least, pushing forward. Sponge and Anarchid are going to be just killing everything. And at the same time, we do have Anarchy coming in with size. There are the size we're waiting for the from the beginning of the game. There are claws, which are going to be a bit of a threat, but the scythe has bypassed those. The Wolverine not targeting the scythe, while the sponge attacking from the south side. Calendar Dub's commander has joined the fight, and coming in with Ravagers as well, but once again, hills. Hills are the big question and big problem. Glaive's coming along the south to help deal with the Ravagers, and the Bandit's going down as well. To, well, Zeus coming in, but frankly, this stage, Anarchy and the Sponge just have this game. Though, a closer run thing than it was in the last match. And that Scythe did... Where's that Scythe? Oh. There we go. 
Going on the south side, getting rid of one of the metal extractors from Kucky. And this Raptor here, not likely to last very long at all. The Glaive doesn't even care about it. Going straight for Counter Dubs Commander. Counter Dubs Commander with a shotgun, which will help quite a lot actually against these Glaives. But the Rock is coming in afterwards. It's going to be a problem and not the best jump. Not really jumming anywhere in particular. And Counter Dubs Commander goes down. That's the second Commander down. Nine minutes of the game. Three minutes better than the last game. I will give them that. And I'm not, I'm not being facetious actually. That's They are playing against really good players. Counter Dubs Kucky are... They're doing quite well considering their opposition. I'm not being snarky here. Three minutes extra on keeping your commander alive isn't bad. Three minutes is a long time in 0 K. Okay. However, that being said, Anarchy this much basically have this game. I mean, Anarchy coming with size everywhere along the map, being very smart with him too, just taking only what he can get and then running away so it can recloak. That is very nicely done. Kucky's bandits in place to try to stop it, but it's not going to work because it's not going around that side again. Anakin knows how to use his glaives. I mean, his sides. I want to call them glaives because that's what they're wielding, but... No, he wants to call them... Scythes. Not quite sure about that name. Never really have been. Although I suppose, depending on, I think some translation... Some, some, some languages, that kind of pole arm is called a scythe. I... Probably could be. I'm probably wrong there. It probably is actually called Scythe, at least in some languages. Polearm names are just weird anyway. And Scythe is taking on the Dominatrix. A good choice of target, though unfortunately, one of the Scythes is. Oh, he's going to pay for his life? It is not. It is going to get out of there. That Scythe escapes. No, it doesn't. It does go down. One Scythe goes down. Suicide assassination, but still, that was a Dominatrix, so. Totally worth it. At this point, Anakin the Sponge bearing down on Countertop and Kucky. Kucky has pretty much the only army that's going to be halfway useful right now. Countertop not even building anything anymore. He has a leveler and that's it. Useful against the bandits, not so much against the... Or sorry, the glaives, not so much against the Zeuses. There are no bandits, what am I saying? It is, however, like I said, useful against glaives. Good to have, but even with that, Scythe coming in, a bandit try to get rid of it. But unable to do so. And... The Glaze, however, cannot stop moving. That's the only thing for them. They can't stop moving, otherwise the Leveler does get them. That Leveler being some use, and nice. I should point out this wall on the Geothermal Plant. Good plan. Very good plan. But even then, the Glaze coming in. We'll be able to get rid of the factory. We'll be able to get rid of everything else around it. Scythe going to go... Is Scythe going to go down? It is not. There is just not enough army for Bukaki. He won't be able to deal with the Scythe at all. And this wall being a bit of a pain. Yep. Down goes the factory, though. The shield off factory is down. The geothermal plant is not. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. That geothermal plant on its own is not going to win the game for Countertub. I mean, for Kucky and Countertub. He's ready to GG. Kucky has not thrown in the towel, however, but Countertub certainly has, and we're getting a team resign here. Countertub losing his factory as well, so, yeah, not bad, given Anarchid and the Sponge being, well, Anarchid and the Sponge. I really cannot blame them on that one. I mean, it's just... That's just how it goes. Yep, yeah, Anarchy and the Sponge win 2-0 against Countertop and Kucky. The next match is... the next match going to be? Yeah, the brackets haven't been updated yet. I'm not sure what the next match is going to be because we are, I believe, playing some parallel matches. Let's see. No, at the moment we aren't. No one else is playing right now, so the next match... I guess whoever is here, if Spider-Man is here, finally, we will have the match we're originally going to have between Spider-Man and Spider-Man, Spellman, Cube Eternal Rookie match. Group C. That will be likely the next match. Anakin the Sponge. Well, 2-0, but not terribly surprising. Anyway, well done for Kalantub and Gucky, considering. I really, I've got to say, that wasn't bad. So just wait on that, and just for the moment, stay tuned. I will not be talking during the next intermission. Just hang on, we'll have the next game in just a few minutes.